it's homework time. Yes, here we are again. Happy, happy, happy homework time. Let's start by putting our name down at the top of the page. I will write my name, and you go ahead and write your name as things should be. And today's date, all right, today you write the actual date. And yes, I see the chart is cut off. I damn purpose, relax. Um, that chart, which is cut off, shows the total monthly rainfall for a city. We're going to use that data in a moment to create a line plot at the bottom of the page and to answer some questions that follow. This is pretty straightforward and we've done this kind of thing on an earlier lesson. I don't know, it's like 34, 35, we did this. No problem, we got this. Let's go on and make that uh, line plot based on the table. Well, here we are. All right, so let's go ahead and draw out our line plot. Uh, so first thing we'll need is a nice cute little number line. Leave a little space above it, because remember we have to put X's up above there? All right. And we put arrows at the end. Beautiful. Now, we're going to put marks for our starting and ending point, but we're not going to label them yet. Because let's look here. Our lowest value we see is greater than 1. So 1 would be a good starting point. We don't have to go to 0, because there would be nothing between 0 and 1. It would just be wasted space. And our highest value is 4 and change, all right? So four in a little bit. So we can go up to five. So from one to five would be a good range here for our line plot. All right, all right. So now we need two, three, and four in here. Okay, so let's try to space those out reasonably equally. Two, three, and four. That's okay, right? And now we can put, and we don't have to label every single one of these, but we could put one and a half. And we look at our values, we see them going into the eighths. So there's two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. And then we can go ahead and put our quarters. Quarters, 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 bisecting the halves. We've done this before. That's why I'm not like belaboring the process here with you. We've done lots of this throughout fractions. And we might as well mark our eighths as well, shouldn't we? All right, so before I do that, though, I'm going to go ahead and label my half points. So this is one and a half. This is two and a half. This is three and a half. And this is four and a half. And I'm doing that so I don't get confused with all these marks, okay? So obviously, bisecting each of my uh, fourths will give me eighths. So there, there there, there. Yep. And doing all these means that when I go to make my line plot, everything is already laid out and the line plot itself will be quite simple. Beautiful. Okay, so now I have all my eighths. So uh, let's just go straight down the line. I'm going to put a little X as I go to make sure I keep track of what I did. So two and two eighths. Well, there's two and I marked out eighths here, so just one eighth, two eighths. Okay, there's two and two eighths. Boom. And I'm going to put a little X here, so I remember I did that. One and three eighths. There's one. I go one, two, three eighths. And there's X for the line plot. And now here's two and three eighths. Well, I already marked two and two eighths just right, so uh, three eighths will be the next door. A little x to make sure I remember I did that one. Two and five eighths. Well, I know two and a half is two and four eighths, so it'll be the next door there. So that's two and five eighths. Four and one fourth. Okay, so remember, uh, you could do this two ways. You can remember, okay, it's the midpoint between four and four and a half, or you could say four and one eighth. Four and two eighths was equal to four and one fourth. So there's four and one fourth. Two and one fourth, same idea. In fact, it's equal to two and two eighths, isn't it? Yes, it is. And so it goes on top. That's how you do a line plot, kind of like a bar graph, but just with these X's. Three and seven eighths. Well, I can go from four and go hop back an eighth, right? And that's three and seven eighths. Three and one fourth. Again, it's going to be midpoint between three and three and a half is three and one fourth. We've done so much fractions, this is probably pretty familiar to you by now, right? One and five eighths. Well, again, one and one half is one and four eighths, so it'll be next door there is one and five eighths. There's one and five eighths. Three and two eighths we know is equal to, yes, three and one fourths. You're seeing these now, but I could also count from three, one eighths, two eighths. Ah, it's at the same place there. 
So it goes on top of it, just as we saw earlier, in very similar fashion. One and three fourths is going to be the midpoint between one and a half and two, right? Or I could count one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. Either way, I could convert it to eighths even. But there it is, one and three fourths. And lastly, one and five eighths. Well, we know one and a half is one and four eighths, so one and five eighths is right next door. There we go. We created our line plot, and now we're ready to go on and answer some questions. All right, now let's look at some of the questions we have to answer. What is the difference in rainfall from the wettest and driest months? So wettest would be the most rainfall, and driest would be the least rainfall. And we can use both the table and or the uh, line plot to see what are wettest and driest. So wettest would be all the way up here, right? Four and one-fourth. So that is our wettest month, and we want to find the difference, so we know that we are subtracting. And down here is our driest month, yep, at one and three-eighths. Now, this will be a lot easier to do if that fourths were eighths. So how many, uh, you know what I'm going to ask, right? How many eighths is one-fourth? Well, we can rewrite one-fourth as two-eighths, right? Just to make this a little more doable here, say four and two-eighths. See how it's the same thing? Equivalent fractions, remember all that? All right, minus one and three-eighths. However, now we see uh, we have to do some regrouping here. Um, we looked at several ways of doing this. Let's go with this way. Let's subtract the whole numbers. Four minus one is three, and we have those two-eighths, and we still need then to subtract three-eighths. And one way we did this was to decompose, to say, okay, this is, we'll get rid of that two-eighths to get to a nice juicy whole number, and then we still have one-eighth to subtract. You remember this? Um, and we can even start using the arrow way here. And so if we take three and two-eighths, subtract the two-eighths to get to that three, and then we just need to subtract the one-eighth Yes, one-eighth less than, can, can you figure that one out? Yep, two and seven-eighths. So the difference is and I could write the difference between the wettest and driest months, but I'm just going to write the difference is two and seven-eighths inches, and I'll use the abbreviation for inches IN. How much more rain fell in May than in April? So now we need to go to the table here. May is four and one-fourth, and how much more? We're, again, looking at subtracting to find the difference between them. So four and one-fourth, again, we're dealing with, and April was two and five-eighths, and look, what do you see right away? We have to do a very similar process here. Well, four and one-fourth, we already know is four and two-eighths, so we're dealing with the same denominators. And we see that when we go to subtract two and five-eighths, that we can't take five from two, so we need to do some decomposing here, some regrouping. Um, so let's go ahead and subtract the whole numbers. Four minus two leaves two, so it'll be two and two-eighths. And then we're going to subtract five-eighths from that. And we'll do it the same way as we did that last one. We'll say, okay, we want to get rid of that two-eighths, give us a nice juicy whole number, and then we'll still have to subtract three-eighths. So then if we take the two and two-eighths, and we'll use the arrow way here as we did above, kind of combining methods here, subtract the two-eighths, ooh, right in small. That'll get us that nice juicy two, and then we just simply need to subtract the three-eighths, and we did a lot of practice at this over the past few weeks. Yep, so that'll leave one cake, remember we leave alone, and the other one we're going to take three of the eight pieces, leaving five of the eight pieces. There we go. So uh, in May, one and five eighths inches, using abbreviation again, more rain fell, and the statement makes it clear that you know what your actual answer is here. So what's the combined rainfall amount for the summer months of June, July, and August? So now we're combining, we're putting together, so we know we're going to be adding them up. And I'm going to save myself uh, some work here because I see I'm dealing again with fourths and eighths. 
You see? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do those conversions even before I get started. So instead of writing 2 and 1 fourth, I'm going to write 2 and 2 eighths for June. July is already in eighths, which is what necessitates converting to eighths. And then August, instead of writing 3 and 1 fourth, I'm going to write 3 and 2 eighths. And I bet we can do all this addition in one fell swoop here. 2 and 3 and 3, right, is 8. 2 eighths, 7 eighths, 2 eighths. 2 plus 7 plus 2, right, is 11 eighths. And then we just simply need to uh, deal with that improper fraction there. So it'll be 8 and, well, 11 eighths is, well, there's 1 8 and 11 with how many eighths left over? 3 eighths, good. So together they are 9 and 3 eighths. So our statement would be uh, 9 and 3 eighths inches fell in summer. Boom! I think we have a little bit more. Let's go see what we have. Yes. All right, and we just have three more questions to round out. Uh, we want to take note here that our answer on that last one was 9 and 3 eighths inches because we need that information for this question. Because it's asking how much more rain fell in the summer months than in the combined rainfall for the last four months of the year. So when we look at the last four months, that would be September, you know, put a little dot, September, October, November, December, those we want to uh, take a total on and then find out how much more was in the summer, okay? So let's do that addition over on the side first, all right? So we want to add up 1 and 5 eighths, September, and 3 and 2 eighths, October. And notice that November is in fourths, so let's put that right into eighths because we know it'll save us a little bit of time here. Uh, so 3 fourths is how many eighths? All right, times 2 halves is 6 eighths, so 1 and 6 eighths for November, and then December is already an eighth, 1 and 5 eighths. When we put these all together, let's see what we get. 1 and 3 and 1 and 1 is 6. And let's do this out of order. It's actually easier that way. 5 and 5 make 10, I see. 2 and 6 are 8. 10 and 8 are 18, and we're talking about eighths. So let's go ahead and put that improper fraction to part of the mixed number. So 6 We'll leave alone for the moment. How many 8's and 18? Yes, there are 2, because 2 times 8 is 16, which leaves how many 8's? That's right, 2 8's. So together it's 8 and 2 8's. And now we want to compare that to the summer months, so that 9 and 3 8's, we want to find the difference between them. So 9 and 3 8's from the summer months, back in number 4 there, uh, minus the total for the last 4 months of 8 and 2 8's, they actually gave us easy subtraction here. Look, 9 minus 8 is 1. 3 eighths minus 2 eighths is 1 eighth. So, um, in the summer months, or we'll just say in summer, comma, 1 and 1 eighths more inches fell of rain. Okay. In which months did it rain twice as much as it rained in December? So let's look at December, 1 and 5 eighths. Well, let's find out what twice as much December is. So that would be, so we could say D, December, equals 2 times 1 and 5 eighths. And we know how to do this. It's an easy one compared to some of the stuff we've done. But we have 2 times 1 plus 2 times the fraction. 5 eighths. Well, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 5 eighths is, yes, 10 eighths. So that'll be 2, and let's deal with this improper fraction. How many eighths in 10? There are, there's 1, right, which leaves how many eighths? 2 eighths. So a grand total here would be 3 and 2 eighths. Now we want to keep in mind that that's also equal to, we want to simplify that fraction there, divide it by two halves. So it'll be equal to three and one fourth, okay? So we want to keep clear that that is uh, twice December. 
All right, so now let's look. Who has three and two eighths or three and one fourth? Because those are equal. Brrr, oh, it's August. I'm going to circle it. Ah, and see, you see why I did it. And October is written in the other way. So October has three and two eighths. So in which months did it rain twice as much? It, uh, it rained twice as much as December in August and October. All right, and the last question here. Each inch of rain can produce 10 times that many inches of snow, because the snow is like floofy to get all scientific on you. If all the rainfall in January was in the form of snow, how many inches of snow fell in January? Well, that's interesting. So if we took January and said, hey, if this, instead of being rain or snow, it would be 10 times as deep, right? We would have 10 times as many inches. So if we simply just take that uh, 2 and 2 eighths and multiply it by 10, that tell us, tell us how many inches of snow that would have been. So it's just simply 10 times 2 and 2 eighths. And I say simply because this is something we're familiar with now. So if we do use that distributive property, do 10 times 2, and then add to that the product of 10 times the fraction, which is 3 eighths, that'll tell us. So 10 times 2 is 20. All right, make that look more like a 0. And then 10 times 3 eighths is 30 eighths. Good. So it'll be 20, and let's deal with that improper fraction. How many eighths in 30? Ah, yes, there are 3. So plus 3, because 3 times 8 is 24. How many eighths does that leave? I want to make sure this looks like a 0. Um, that leaves 30 minus 24 is 6, so it leaves 6 eighths. So altogether, it's 23 and 6 eighths. That's what it would be. Um, so... It would be 23 6 8 inches, using the abbreviation of snow. And look what you've done. You've completed yet another homework time. Congratulations. Nice work. I'll see you again next time. It is once again homework time.